It's time to talk about the very worst comic books of the week, the comic books you absolutely should be avoiding at all costs. And here to do this, th to take a slice of pain with yours truly, is my good friend Doc, the, the X-Men historian and the Marvel aficionado. Doc, are you ready for some more pain? Uh, apparently, I have become a literary masochist. The, the last few years of reading X-Men should have proven that to me. But you know what? This hey. These comics this week were pretty especially awful we're doing a public service here doc don't don't feel bad about it we are doing this so the viewers out there don't have to go through what we've been through reading harley quinn the animated series eat bang kill tour number five and dark hold omega the end of a an event i don't think even most people even knew was going on i feel like comic reviewing needs its own version of a purple heart for for taking taking the the the, the shots that no one else really wanted to doc has taken shots left and right now let's get into this let's talk about the very first comic book harley quinn the animated series eat bang kill tour number five writer t franklin artist max Aaron. this comic book has been in the news of late uh, after some of the comments from t franklin about what they wanted to do with harley quinn why they're so excited to to get to do the series i will say this up front this thing looks great it looks like a really good animated cartoon comic yeah, and it looks like it's for children. It does, which is it's, a big really, problem it when it problem. comes to the content. Yeah, um, there is a mature warning at the very beginning of it, but when you get into it, like the first five pages of this comic are stinky pussy jokes, Doc. Yeah. There's no other way to put it. A fart joke and a bunch of stinky pussy jokes. It was really kind of disturbing to me. Like, like well, it wasn't disturbing. It was just unsettling it's like t franklin just has an obsession well i don't understand why a lot of of like thir 20 30 40 something i don't fucking know how old t franklin is gotta be in her 40s or 50s why they have an obsession with having the sense of humor of a 12 like a 13 year old boy then beating the joke to death that horse is so dead it's turning into fucking glue by the time you get done with these first few pages because of how much she's beat the hey pussies are smelly joke into the ground clean your pussy it's yeah jokes. yes yes it's it's there's just plenty of that now there's a lot of really weird stuff about this the thing that i found the most off-putting even probably more off-putting than the the opening salvo of, of vagina jokes or disgusting vagina jokes is the voice of harley quinn for someone who seems to like the character so much t franklin doesn't really have the voice of harley quinn when the character is speaking there's no cadence or, or there's there's no use of, of phrases associated with the character it feels like it's actually t franklin like speaking to the stripper and t franklin's inner monologue talking about how much they want to make it rain on bitches all of the dialogue, all of the monologues, all of the internal monologues, all of the writing. There was no voice in this comic book except for T. Franklin. Every character, every situation, all the monologues, all the dialogues, they all had the exact same voice. They all had the same cadence. And Harley Quinn has one of the most unique voices in all of comics. You know, we know it from the animated series. People know what Harley sounds like. They know the way that she speaks and interacts with people. That's really why it's so off-putting. It takes you right out of the story because you're like, you could do this dialogue with Harley's voice. She just decided not to. It's incredibly unique. You can go back to Batman, the animated series. Hell, you could even go to the Suicide Squad movies. You know, Margot Robbie hit that voice pretty perfectly. There was no hint of that at all in this. There was just T. Franklin wanting to constantly talk about strippers and like not even being creative. Like, see, Harley, her, her internal monologue would have been very, very different than what you had in here. So besides the bad jokes that don't really land, they're actually more uh, gross than anything, and not like nailing the voice of the main character who has such a distinct voice, it's so easy to realize that it's been missed. There's also an underlying story of trauma. It really, even the way that Harley's dealing with trauma seems really weird. It's like, it's almost shallow and beneath a pretty shallow character herself. You have two explorations of trauma here you have harley's and then the longer one is ivy's but either one 
it, it's like it's framed as a very serious topic, but at the same time, actually treated like a joke and, and like somebody that doesn't know how trauma responses work that don't understand how trauma awareness like from the 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 victim of the the traumatic experience how they process things how they are aware of their their trauma responses none of that is even close to handled with any sort of uh delicacy it's it's you, you it's something you would expect maybe i don't i don't want to lay in any accusations like somebody that's on the spectrum that doesn't realize or get human emotions and yes. have empathy really for other people that's kind of the way i i read it it's, well, it's it, just kind of gross it, it what to me it read more like somebody that wanted to understand trauma but then has never actually experienced it and thought this is how you do it like somebody that's completely that that does it that's never had the experience of dealing with it and Which just you wouldn't and, expect and, from a writer that's so mature you know she's literally in her 40s or 50s yeah and it feels uh, like a, like a 13 year old boy is writing this it does if this whole comic felt like it was being written by a 13 year old boy that wants to imagine how it would feel to have a traumatic childhood and and, and relationships and how they would process it in the future I'm thinking like sheltered, middle class, suburban, but emo kid from the early 2000s. That's who I'm thinking of is what what I'm thinking of is like the person that would like it's all imaginary trauma written by somebody that doesn't feel like they they know how like just randomly going like uh, Ivy just randomly going blank, freezing up and having this. Like for a long period of time, basically just going catatonic standing up so that she can have some weird mental thing and then just come snap right back out of it. Like she can go on some emotional, you know, internal journey and then just snap out of it and it's perfectly fine. That's not how that shit works. Yeah, you can go catatonic, you can freeze up and you could kind of have like a mental journey. When you come out of that shit, you are not just going back to, oh, yes. Okay, now where were we? Um, it's not a fucking mental side quest. Plus, this thing is just filled to the brim, except for like one fight scene. of It's just dialogue. It's supposed to be like Slice of Life, but it's like the grossest Slice of Life comic I think I've ever read. I don't I don't know who this comic book's for. It's I don't think it's really, you know, it looks like it's for kids. It's not for kids. It says it's mature, so you would think it's for adults, but I don't think it's for like mature adults. I think it's like for like a weird niche area of, of people, maybe in their 18 to 24 years old that just, you know, they still feel like a kid, but they aren't an adult yet. Maybe they'll understand what this is about. This is for a bunch of lesbians with the sense of humor of a 30 year old man with arrested development. That's what this is. It's so weird. I don't know what this is for and it sucks. I imagine there's probably two dozen comic book readers that, that probably fall in this demographic. I don't know. Uh, you know, I think most adults, you know, function as adults, but this certainly isn't for it. It's, it's strange. I don't, I don't think it's really for anybody to be completely honest. It is a terrible comic book. I personally wouldn't read it. You're not as much of a DC fan. So I don't think maybe it was as offensive to you as it was for me. No, it wasn't as offensive, but it was just me sitting there going, what the fuck is, who the fuck is this for? I can I can respect something that is bad and just not for me or just not for me. This wasn't just this is just wasn't for anybody. And it's terrible. So let's move over to, to Marvel Comics. They are it wasn't just a DC week. We had the Dark Hold Omega from Steve Orlando and C and Tormi. This is supposed to be a big event book, right? People are supposed to know what this is. It's supposed to be impactful. This is going to have no impact on anything. In fact, this is like a Scarlet Witch story, even though we had another Scarlet Witch story going over on an X-Men with Trial of Magneto. How do these things uh, you know, coalesce with each other? I like the art, to be completely honest. I think there was some pretty interesting imagery here, but what really pisses me off about Darkhold Omega, Doc, is the treatment of Doom. Is he a jobber? Is he jabron now? I feel like every time they need to have a female magician... Or, or mystic or anything that any any female character that has like any sort of supernatural abilities at this point she needs to show how amazing she is by 
Dr. Doom doing a job to her. That's what it is. So yeah, he's a jobber, but only for female mystics. I, I, I was reading through this and he, he, he has this plan and you know, they, they start off with him being the one that's able to carry the dark hold because even the Scarlet Witch being in its general presence was driving her insane. He needed to create a protective bubble around her and him and it to protect him. Yet at some point she could just, it's like she just turned around and later in the book just taps it. All it, all it took was her tapping him on the shoulder and he basically gets fucking jobbed. It was the goddamn finger poke of doom. It was. It's so. It's such a weird moment because you know you got the uh, Kathan. He's this big enormous monster. He's going to destroy everything when he comes in through the portal to Earth. And she's got the the book, and she just like eats it. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's the story. And now here. she's the dark hold. <clears throat> so she gives. Who would want a, a crazy woman that's wiped out and massive amounts of uh, mutants on Earth to be the the one key figure that's that's holding back the portal to this this crazy realm where everything evil would come through. What if she has this, a bad day, Doc? She's going to lose it. So the woman that, like, freaked out and destroyed the Avengers imagined her own children into existence, depowered millions and millions of mutants, um, has also had a number of other basically just mental fucking breakdowns that has almost destroyed the world. Uh, yeah, you know what? I want to give her, let her become the embodiment of a book that if you read it, you go insane. So it what, seems like a, a big plot hole there. There's also a really weird moment where this dude just shows up and it looks like he comes directly out of her vagina. Yes. I I thought that that's where she came out of it. I was really confused. Like, like, she, did she, did, did she, she birth this guy? Like he's full she, grown. Yeah, did she give birth to like a midget that, that that starts like growing the minute? Like, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Silver Age Superman, where he could have a little tiny mini Superman fly out of his fucking hand. Apparently, when well, he would Star- have, had to have flown out of his dick. Yes, it would have been it would have been him flying out of Superman's dick. Such a weird page in the comic book. I, I was pretty thrown off. So the story is just bad. The execution is really bad. But you know what the, the most offensive part is? You throw in all these heroes that I like. You know, you got Spider-Man, you got Iron Man, you got Blade, you got, also got Wasp and Black yeah. Bolt. There's literally no reason that they're in the story. No, they're they do not- nothing to stop the the Cthon guy. It's Doom and well, it's Doom in theory, I guess. And then Scarlet Witch just takes the book and does it herself. Yeah. Because she so- don't need no man, Doc. Yeah, so apparently all of those, all of the other issues that you've been reading up until now, entirely fucking irrelevant. Yes. They were a waste of money because all of those, they got thrown into this, into Cthon's world, killed a bunch of his like foot soldier cannon fodder demony things that didn't do anything that didn't serve any purpose then just to get fucking smashed by Cthon. at this point literally nothing's mattered and then scarlet witch and doom come in basically throw the all you know spider-man and iron man and them into the corridor beat up a Cthon, and then bring them back and make them be normal again w- what purpose did they serve they didn't they just wanted to be able to say that spider-man and and these popular characters were in it the other thing that's really weird about this doc is the dialogue once again and in this one you have this ultra serious dark book like oh my goodness you know the the world's ending you know all these things are happening and the characters are talking to like they're in some weird 1940s like comic book they have such cheesy stupid dialogue it does not match the tone or the tenor of the story that you're reading you're like what the fuck are these guys talking about it apparently they're completely aware of everything that's going on, even though they've been driven mad. It did not work. Yes. So they're supposedly the driven mad alternate life versions of themselves that all remember their previous lives and know they're just, being manipulated. Yeah. Go along with it. Yeah. Just so that they could kill the Chuthon and take his power but but they there it was so weirdly meta 
they stopped just short of breaking the fourth wall with us because these characters and you never you they never think hey you know i can remember my previous life i remember this life this life kind of sucks can i have the other one back no they're just kind of evil and dastardly it's definitely an auspicious debut for superstar writer Steve Orlando. This was one of yeah. their big gets at Marvel Comics. It was laughable when they announced it. It's even more laughable now that you see really his first story of a Marvel. This thing sucks. I have no faith in, in Marauders being good under under Steve Orlando either. I know you're a Steve Orlando fan, you know, some some of his work over at DC, but I'm hesitant. You know, I, I, I'm hesitant too because this is the first – thing that I've, I, the only thing I've read from him are Midnighter and Midnighter and Apollo. So that's it. That's my my experience with him. And I thought those were done pretty well, as best as I could expect with Wildstorm characters in the DCU. But this was not a very good debut. This was, this was, I don't know if he just doesn't play well with others. Like, did the other issues from this, dark hold event thing were they written by other people or were they this was this okay so basically he just said all right well i got to finish this and i don't really give a fuck about any of these other issues that are coming out because this issue could have been completely standalone with like five extra pages at the beginning of them going after the dark hold in the first place and been perfectly satisfactory I personally would say the Harley Quinn issue from T. Franklin is, is worse. There's so much bad dialogue in there. there. There's there's different levels of terribleness there that I don't think Darkhold personally reaches. But, uh, you know, which one do you think is worse, Doc? I definitely think um, the the Harley Quinn one was worse. Um, at least the, the Darkhold one had the redeeming value of, let's see, when we're all done with this, they brought back Omega the Unknown. This is like the fourth time they brought this character back. I want to see how badly it f- fails miserably. This time, the Harley one was just bad. It was, don't do that again. Remember, folks, we are doing this for you. If you enjoy the reviews and and you've taken the warning and you're not going to read these, could please give us a thumbs up and let us let other people know that this is a video worth, worth, uh, worth viewing. And these are some comic books that you definitely want to skip. Now, if you are looking for good comic books, yesterday, Drew from Comic Books Elite joined me. It's the videos right here, the very best comic books of the week. We've got six comic books that we think you should be reading. Skip these and, and get to these. Definitely watch this video if you're looking for good comic books.